Hi, I'm Mike Morales. You are watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media. I'm here in San Antonio. That young man over there is... Rick Levy in San Diego. Rick, um, I, I, should, I should tell you that this, I'm excited tonight because for a couple of reasons. One, we have a... We did, Alex and I did, a review of this tequila not too long ago. and We wrote an article on, on, on tequila titanium now take a look at this this is the old iteration this is the old titanium bottle not a bad bottle we had a lot of fun with this and what rick is holding rick is holding the new version the new and improved titanium look at take a look at this bottle the new eight-sided bottle it's 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 almost feng shui look at that <laughs> it's got a bagua it's eight-sided nice little um ribbon on the top there you got that little um the their insignia that that's their symbol um and i forget exactly what that symbol stands for i should know this but i don't um this is from gnome 1479 i can tell you that they have not changed gnomes so they didn't move out of their distillery they are still at the same distillery take a look at that's look at hacienda la capilla in uh, tapatitla Yes. Take a look at how they did it. You know, if you saw our original review and it's still available on YouTube, you'll see Alex playing around with the with the, with the, the bottle glorifier. And uh, we were actually given a, one of these bottles had a had a uh, had a little battery that when you place it on the bar, it would light up because it really does look really cool in the club. But there now you there you go. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll stand in for it, Alex it, tonight. Yeah. We just need some. We need some some music playing in the background. So you know, so I think Alex does that beatbox really cool. Um, but you can see that they kept the lattice work. You see the the, the little. Yeah, that's uh, really attractive. I like yeah, that. it is because they had it originally uh, on a frosted bottle. You see how they did that. Mm -hmm. um, we nominated it for for packaging the first time around. I I would like to just stop the bat renominate this for the new and improved packaging it really is a gorgeous package yeah and uh and they've carried the, it, they've done some nice touches in carrying it through the line so each yes. each uh each varietal has its own signature color and uh you know they all look very handsome in a set um do you know offhand i, I know you said uh, la hacienda la capilla the the distillery what a, uh, do you know offhand which other brands come out of there i, I could look it up but why I yes i do in fact, I, I figured you could. A lair comes out of there, which uh, you'll probably be oh, seeing a review Allaire. for that shortly. The luxury tortilla company. <laughs> <laughs> I with a, with a very, very tall, very heavy bottle. Yes. Uh, you know, now here's just for the sake of transparency, we also nominated the, the original juice. We nominated it for Brand of Promise in the Blanco category. So this is not a resubmission. We're, we're, we, uh, Rick and I have not done the Blanco, so we're going to taste the Blanco so that Rick has a really good idea of, of what to expect with the rest of the line. So this is a, a retaste, but not a resubmission, because it is a, 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 just for the, again, the sake of transparency, I've had a little bit of this juice, if you haven't been, haven't told, haven't been able to tell. Um, I know it hasn't changed, but Rick has not had it. So we're going to go into the Blanco. What what glasses are we using tonight, Rick? Because it was the I'll other reason I was a little excited. I'm going to use my experimental prototype <laughs> from yeah, we, uh, courtesy of Romeo Ristov at uh, Chisholm Trail. Chisholm Trail, and this is the one that I was using that we did. Uh, all, I did all the mescals with, and um, I will tell you this is the first time I've used it for a tequila. There were there were two versions. So, Yes, and I have the two versions here. If you can see, this one is a little bit more wider, a little bit stouter, whereas this one here is a little bit taller and narrower. I think I'm going to go with the taller, narrower one for the Blanco, and then I'll save the uh, I'll save the wider one for the uh, aged versions. You know, to okay. pull out the deeper notes. That'll work. Um, this is the, we're working. Uh, in case you haven't uh, been uh, catching up with us, we are working uh, with Chisholm Trail Craft glassware glasses. 
uh, here in Texas, and um, he, uh, Romeo Ristock is the proprietor and is um, uh, trying to come up with a, a glass that, uh, that will be suitable for um, sipping agave spirits. And these are prototypes that uh, he'll be working with uh, Stossel. Uh, and you may have seen our Stossel glasses. We're, in fact, I've, I've got mine here. It's the it's the Stossel nosing glass. There's this one here. It's a stemware. Yes. And, it's uh, you know, there you know, the, are, well, there's some similarities in the shape. But, yeah. Uh, the, they're, the they're not the same. The similarities, I think, go uh, almost, um, almost, uh, at, the glass, the, the thickness of the glass is something that, that I think is indicative of the Stossel. So, and um, this is a heavier glass. This is even a heavier glass than the Stossel nosing glass that I have. Um, well, it's, the, a, it's a thick it's case, too. Thicker. It's, you know, it's even thicker at the top. Um, the uh, yes. thickness of the glass, but it's got a real solid, heavy base to it. And just look at how, you know, it is really giving a great presentation to that Blanco. It's making it very shiny, and uh, it's really catching the light beautifully here. How do you how do you like it in your hands? You know, the base is thicker than than uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the Glencairns we've been using. So do you do you are are you are you comfortable with the with with holding? I'm it feeling like I, I'm feeling like I need to I need to uh, grab it really almost at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you have like a like a Glencairn whiskey glass, um, you know it's a well. I actually have one right here. I'll pull one out. So with the Glencairn, you know it has this uh, you know stubby base that you can grab onto. With this, you know you kind of uh, have your fingers. Um, on the bottom, you know, maybe it's the kind of thing that you would just kind of lay in your hand and, uh, you know, waft under your nose. Oh, mm. could be. Wow. Some, somewhat, uh, kind of like a, like a, a, a cognac snifter almost. Yeah. How do you like those notes? I, you know, I think, uh, it's it's giving a really great presentation on the nose, and yes. uh, you know, so that's to the credit of both the glass and, of course, the juice. Mm, it's coming up beautifully. Yeah, I'm getting uh, I'm getting some herbal notes, but I also at the center of it I get that um, that uh, common um, Highlands agave uh, note that I usually pick up. Which I usually, um, you know, I'll kind of uh, uh, label it as apple, but not like a sweet apple, not like an apple pie, but you know, just in terms of the uh, the uh, you know the white juicy um, the what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> like a, like uh, would you say like a crab apple maybe or or. Well, I don't know. I don't know uh, if I've eaten crab apples or Brand, spent a lot of time on them. But yeah, you know, it does have it does have a greener kind of feel to it than uh, than what is typical the, of Highlands. Then it's it's the greener. But you know, with um, the Highlands agaves, you know, they grow larger. They have a oh, it's starch. I was thinking of starch. So you know, in, inside the pina, there is a larger mass of of starchy material. Um, right than you get in, say, the uh, lowlands agaves, typically. And uh, it's that kind of starchy center where it's, uh, you know, where uh, it's almost just, you know, the pure agave starch, and that's going to uh, convert to sugars very cleanly. And uh, it just reminds me of, um, you know, the starchy heart of an apple. That works. <laughs> I like it. In, in like five thousand words. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes sense, you know, then in, in, in how you're 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 coming to grips with the with it. Uh Compañía Tequilera Haciendo la Capilla. This is in uh, Tepatitlan, Jalisco is what it says. This is now of course I'm reading the old bottle, I'm sure that the location's the, the same. It's still being imported by the same guys, which is uh uh tequila titanium um and the, uh, let's see, 
uh, there we go, Premium Spirits LLC is the name of the company. And for those of you who have been following Titanium, we, we have a write-up of them on Tequila Aficionado. It's called Luxury Attained. You can find it there on the website. Um, Casey Hartle is still the, the uh, CEO of the company and, and working hard. They've done, they've come a long way from this, but the juice hasn't changed. And that, and that I can tell you for sure, because I had to do a side-by-side -side with, with both of them. And, it, and it's really, I, I love the nose on this one. It just, it's just a really, you know, it's a, it's a hearty nose. I, I, yeah. and, I, and I like that the glass is picking it up really nicely, too. It, it really is. It's a, you know, it's a great experience. Well, it's yeah, you know, that's a, that's a real solid, beautiful nose. Mm -hmm. mm. So it, it, it initially comes in a little bit thin and very subtle. But then... Um, it, it kind of grows on the palate and it, you know, sort of grows into the pepper. Yeah, it does. It's a, it's a, it's a gradual increase all the way to the finish. Yeah. And, um, uh, right now I'm, I'm getting a little bit of just a, just a hair of bitterness underneath my, my palate at the bottom, but it's not a, not a, not a bad thing. It's just, it's just from probably from the peppery explosion. It doesn't, you know, it's not, I can't even say it's an explosion. It's a gradual like a gradual pepper heat, you know, it's yeah. not, it's, it's not aggressive at, on the intake. Yeah. Which, it's which like, is, there are other it, tequilas we've had where, you know, as soon as it comes in, it'll pop on the palate right. and this one, this one will sneak up on you. Yeah. The, the, they, um, when, when we first met Casey, they, um, were nice enough to bring us a bottle of, of another Blanco, another brand that they hope to someday bring in. Um, and it was just a Blanco in a beautiful ceramic bottle. I, I don't have the bottle nearby. I'd show it to you. But that Blanco, when we talk about subtle, it was probably one of the most subtle Blancos and really taste tasteful Blancos I've ever had. And it's it's stellar juice. And and that that is hopefully the natural progression of where they're going with, with this one. So when we say that the, the intake and the pepper is gradual... That's exactly what we got with that much finer iteration coming from this distillery. So, yeah, um, it's it's a, you know I would uh, I would probably call it a bloom. You yeah, know, it's like it's like go. a slow yeah. opening and blooming. Yes, on the palate. Yes, very much, very much like like the nose is blooming in this in this glass now. Wow, and it's yeah. and it's so these are these are bottom. did you get that? Yeah, the, these are the estate grown agaves. Uh, right there yes. at fourteen seventy nine, La Capilla. Um, and uh, what else do we know? They are cooking the agaves in an autoclave, but they are slow cooking them. So they're not using the autoclave for speed. Um, they're more using it for precision, I guess. Well, Which, you know, and you know, I'm always talking about how much I love um, masonry ovens, um, but the reason for that is because you know they cook slowly. Right. And so, um, you know, I don't have a problem with uh, with autoclaves that are used for a slow controlled cook. I've had several tequilas done that way, and uh, and you know they're very good. Some are some are even blended. You know, they'll they'll do a half and half blend when they shred them. So some are cooked in in masonry masonry ovens, and the other half would be in autoclaves, and then they blend the two to get a a, a certain flavor profile. This one is not a blend. But um, I, well, that I, nose I, is still I, coming. That is really, you know, that's a, a really lovely nose. I'm enjoying that a lot. It's opening up even more, huh? Yeah, and you know, there's some, there's, you know, fresh green notes on there, but it's not. It, I, I'm not feeling like it's, uh, you know, green undercooked agave or you no. know, speed cooked agave or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, just kind of lovely grassy notes and herbal notes. I love this glass, man. I'm telling you, this is this is the first try I've had. Uh, I've used this glass with a tequila. Uh, I had, uh, if you've been watching, I've used these these two prototypes with mezcal, and it's almost too easy, you know, with a mezcal, especially at a higher ABV like we were like we were using. 
Yeah. Uh, with a tequila that this subtle, it it really and and the th I thought the thickness of the glass would kind of mute the nose a little bit, but it didn't do that. Not in this case, anyway. It's fun to fondle. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's like since you have to grab it at the bottom, you just end up kind of rolling it around in your hand, and that probably prompts um, prompts a bloom in the nose as well. Well, you know, I, I try not to warm it up too much, you know, because like it, that's the danger you have with these glasses is you warm it up, hmm. then either the release of 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 the of the nose changes a little bit, or you know, it's good. It's not a bad thing. But in a Blanco, I really try to, myself, I try to keep it at room temp as much as I can before it starts to heat up too much. Would you say, um, in terms of the nose, are you getting anything like celery or green pepper? Um, uh, you know, there, there are guys that get like mushroom. I don't get a mushroom, for instance. Um, I, some people get asparagus. Yeah, but just in terms of, you know, the kind of fresh green notes that I'm trying to identify, that's kind of where my mind is going. Well, I, I have had, I, you know, I've, the, the nose that I'm getting is reminiscent of a lot of tequilas from the highlands that use autoclaves. So that must be indicative of that, hmm. of that area or, or of, of the highlands tequila. You know, it's not a bad thing. I like it. I like yeah. it because it really, it's almost like a sign of, you're assured that the process, the way, the way these opinions were, were, were cooked was done properly, you know, yeah. with, with a lot of care. And it sounds it, that it's identifiable it, to the region as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And and like I say, the 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 palate on the intake, it it's gradual and I like yeah. that. It's not a sudden, it's not a in your face. It 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 warms up to you, you know, instead of you having to warm up to it. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. You know, when uh, when oh, I first it's, had it's, it. It's, it's, Citrus, like a lime zest or something. Yeah, absolutely. Or maybe not even lime, but so grapefruit, probably. You know, yeah. it's a it's a it's a heartier um, um, a citrus. Yeah, not a sweet flowery one. Yeah. So, what do you think? How do you like it? I like it. You know, uh, like I was um, kind of saying when it first hit my palate, I was wondering, oh. You know, is this just kind of going to be like a, you know, milk toast kind of tequila? But, you know, what it really was, it was, you know, kind of an elegant, subtle entry that blooms. And, uh, you know, that's quite nice. I, I wish that I still had some of the, the that other tequila that they brought to us because that one was, mm -hmm. holy cow. That, that, you know, it was subtle and elegant and it just grew on you. It was just, it was just. It's like petting. It was like my pet cat. It was just, you know, just <laughs> it just really, starts purring, right? Yeah, it starts to purr, you know, and and this is like um, uh, this was the the more commercial, you know, um, uh, iteration, and I, and I love this. This is this is they did nothing, you know. Like I say, it's not a weak link. This is a great start. Yeah, to <laughs> yeah, and in terms of the rest of the production process, we're told uh, that they do open air fermentation and stainless steel vats. And then um, uh, they are doing uh, double distillation, all in copper pot stills. Mm -hmm. So and so uh, that other that other flavor that we're trying to pinpoint could be from the from the copper pot stills as well, because they also impart, you know, a, a, a definite flavor yeah. that that a lot of people you know enjoy and 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 expect you know from copper. So yeah, and uh, but anyway, you know, I understand that. Uh, Distilling in copper as well helps to uh, remove um, some uh, other, you know, compounds that you might get otherwise in the distillation process. So, you know, I'm not finding any defects in this. It is, uh, you know, it's a lovely profile, well put together. Yeah, I know that their image is, like I say, a club, a club image, you know, and uh, uh, looks great on, you know, for, for uh, bottle service and, uh, you'll notice that the the uh, owner Robert Tejerina is uh, is also the owner of a of a, uh, a, a jet company, and and you know that that that's the image that they're portraying. But this is really a nice 
elegant sipper. And so again, like we said before, don't be put off by the bottle or, or you know, judge everything by this. Um, I, I'd say spend some time with it. Needless to say, there's probably a, a great possibility of using this in a cocktail, in several cocktails, because it'll really stand up. I think I think that the flavor profile is hearty enough to stand up to margaritas, palomas, things like that, uh, or anything that your mix, local mixologist can come up with. Uh, so right now you can get that for about $33 at various locations in Texas. Um, yeah. But they have a new distribution deal. Uh, so uh, soon, I guess, they're going to be uh, available in Colorado, Florida, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Nevada, and Missouri. So not here so, in California yet, but uh, they're yeah, working on that distribution. So they're but, branching, but branching out of Texas. So I'm glad, I'm glad they finally are getting to that point because we, we've, been, we've been raving about this tequila, the old, the old version, for a long time. I had to hide this from me because... And it was the last of our the last of our stash. <laughs> so so glad that these guys uh, came across and and really improved the, the the look of the line. And now, if you hang in there with us, you're going to see us go through the reposado, the añejo, and there's an extra añejo. Don't ask me how they did that. I don't know. But if you hang in there with us, uh, that's our take on titanium blanco from Rick and myself this time. You can also view the. Uh, Original uh, titanium with with Alex and me. Uh, the juice has not changed. It's still stellar. Um, sign up below on our if you're watching us on our YouTube channel. R press that red button down there. And uh, again, I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That guy over there is Rick Levy in San Diego. You've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media. Like we say here, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>